According to me, a premium eye surgery, which involves premium lens technologies, premium laser technologies, requires a basic premium mindset. That mindset is a collaborative effort of not only the premium technologies, but also the thought process. I feel the OPD3 provides all the information we need to truly customize these surgeries, bring about the premium vision that we are collectively aiming for. The OPD3 also allows you to look at all the parameters of cases so you can actually now make those patients who are non-candidates into candidates based on the additional information that shows actually that they were not abnormal. It's just that we have to change our techniques. For example, whether you do a PRK instead of a LASIK and thin cornea, whether you do early cataract surgery in a 60-year-old who presented for LASIK. So with the data today, you're not in a gray zone of, oh, you're not a candidate, oh, just wait. You can actually precisely zone down to, here's a technique I can suggest for you. In my practice, which has a worldwide referral pattern of patients who maybe had premium eye surgery and are unhappy with their vision, this technology has become my mainstay where I can determine what's the cause of their being unhappy. Was the lens a mismatch based on spherical aberration? Is the rotation of the toric lens not exactly where the surgeon intended it to? Do I have to correct the cornea based on the corneal aberrations that were left uncorrected so I can complement the premium lens? Today I feel with this OPD3 technology, I can actually plan those patients, send them back happily back to their surgeons with excellent vision. I think this technology also demonstrates a doctor's commitment to excellence, not only in future technologies, but a desire to detailed plan and customize surgery for premium outcomes. Also your staff gets to see your commitment as far as patients just exhibiting these outputs of uh, data in maps and colors and potential visions with high order aberrations all put together. I think it creates a great level of confidence of the patients that this doctor is building a plan for me, customized for me aiming for premium vision and is dedicated to taking it to the next level. I think just like in surgery, we are looking forward to better and better microscopes to see things we never saw before to make our surgeries better. This technology is letting us understand and calculate things before we just took for granted. Things like angle kappa, things like spherical aberration, things like planning for toricity or toric placement of the lens is, is amazing with this technology and also you can after surgery document that you did the thing you planned for, so you can actually see where the toric lens is sitting here. Uh, this also becomes important for previous refractive surgery cases, or as you discussed, premium unhappy patients who fly to me and come with, you know, my doctor did good surgery, but I don't see great. Well, here's your cause, and here's the direction we need to take. So the patient and doctor then becomes a team. I think that is vital as we move ahead towards supervision. Data that we get from this technology, even that is pupil dependent, whether it's mesopic, scotopic, photopic, also helps us understand the reason some patients complain, whether they came for the first visit after getting glasses from the optometrist and are looking at refractive surgery, or whether they are planning for premium surgery so we can plan it in a way that we come out with a satisfactory outcome. To me, practice efficiency is more than seeing the number of patients that you can see in an hour, it also means how consistent you are in producing the results that you and the patient aim for. So pra the practice efficiency increases with this technology for many reasons. Number one, it takes very little space and does all these tests at one station. Number two, the speed of doing the test. Three, the ease with which the staff can get trained and become excellent and repeatably consistent with the, the data. But also what is very important to me is that when you plan your premium surgeries using technologies like these, you have happy patients, less retreatments, more consistent outcomes. That is the higher level of efficiency. The OPD also allows the doctor, even before he enters the room to see the patient, to pretty much in his mind have a clear design of what this patient's potential is for vision or what additional testings may be needed for him to make that decision. So given the data points that the doctor can see right from topography to refraction to higher order aberrations, before you walk into the room, you already have a mindset of more or less where this conversation is going to go. The, the OPD3 also can be integrated into the EHR systems that a doctor may have in their office prior to purchasing the technology. And I think that's a huge advantage because the future for all of us is a single seamless technology platform. I think the OPD technology also is the trend of the future because as you see not only are surgical instruments getting more and more consolidated, this is a diagnostic station which does over uh, testing for over six different machines which could have been in six different places. So uh, it's, it's a technician's dream, it's also a patient's 
um, a happy spot to be because they come and sit at one place, get all the tests done in a few seconds. So I do believe this technology is in a way stationed to the future trend we are seeing more and more in our industry of consolidating everything into one station and one machine. As a teacher, as a surgeon, for me it's also important to document my outcomes so I can share with my colleagues. I think this technology gives me the ability to show them why certain patients are happy despite great surgery and why certain patients are unhappy despite great surgery. So in, uh, in my teachings all over the world, I think this has become a very important, uh, a very integral uh, part of my teachings where I can show images vision outcomes, relate that to technology like torical lens placement, are we correct or off, um, the, the spherical aberrations, where have we landed and why is the patient happy or unhappy. So I think this is a great tool for teaching surgeons too as we share our information and experience worldwide.